Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 33 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and the internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, a cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. In this week's show, David and I will be talking about that in the world of IT, the cloud is not just changing how IT works, but also driving a shift in desired IT skill sets. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips about the desired IT skill sets. Hi, Dave. It's great to have you on another cloud computing training show this week. Yeah, it's great. It's great to be here, especially with this topic. I'd love to discuss it. Uh, me too. We've had a great couple of shows already. Uh, we've recorded today uh, on Australia and the global uh, things going on and also the C-suite. So if you've just jumped in on the training show, make sure you skip back and, and get the other ones as well because we've, we've had some really good fun, in my opinion. Obviously, other people might take differently to that, but, <laughs> but essentially, I feel we've both had fun on this and uh, you know, it's certainly uh, refreshing to be talking about cloud with a bit of a, a sense of humor as well. So you know, it's all good fun. But yeah, I mean, this is going to be a great show uh, and it's certainly, I know, you're inundated with people asking about skill sets. I get lots of questions as well. So yeah, and I want to open the show with this great question. Experts are predicting that non-traditional skills will be essential for cloud-enabled next generation IT workforce. If this is true, Dave, you know, how do we do that? Yeah, this is a big one. I mean, the thing is, uh, we have lots of people around who understand storage systems and process systems and uh, uh, database systems, things like that, but not as many understand machine learning and deep learning and uh, uh, IoT and all the you know 20 flavors of IoT that we have going on, as well as, uh, oh boy, um, any kind of cloud platform that's coming up. And so what we're looking for is kind of the creative, innovative individual that really kind of thinks out of the box and is able to take new systems such as machine learning, deep learning, IoT, predictive analytics, things like big data, and actually turn it into solutions. And that's that's kind of a tough person to find and, and a tough person to train for. So, I mean, if I put out a, a, a email blast today and said I was looking for people who are, you know, going to be innovative and creative and, and basically take things to the next level, you know, I would scare most of the people off. And, and But the reality is you need those people within the organization, at least, you know, 5%, 10% of your, your IT staff to start moving in those directions. And so we got to start thinking about how we're going to build these people or else a lot of these companies are going to be at a deficit because the other people are going to have the uh, upper hand in terms of creativity and innovation because they have the people who are able to train the people who are able to do these amazing things with technology. And so that would be my concern today where I CIO in a global 2000 company. Yeah, it, it really is. A, there's a huge concern out there for that innovation and that creativeness when it comes to building technologies that aren't even really in the, the forefront of the mind of organizations, sort of second guessing that sort of technology market. I think you're 100% you're, you're right. Uh, and that's a, that's a reference joke from a previous show that we just did. So if you want to go back to the C-Suite show, you're why that 100% joke is, is there. So look, you know, and, and I think it's, it's, we did a show with Ron Batra actually, if I remember correctly, uh, on episode 17, I believe it is, uh, where we talked about edge computing and, and people that are developing, you know, the, the thing for um, uh, the smallest potential part of compute that can be possible that's going to relay statistics, relay data backwards and forwards. And, and, and we, we covered some fascinating things there that there's not enough skill sets around that and how do you develop that. So if you're, if you're interested in finding out more about that, skip back to episode 17, the Ron Batra show, because David and I and, and Ron had a great conversation around that and, and developing how, how you develop your skill sets. So how do you stand out in the marketplace with regards to being innovative and creative and forward thinking for the marketplace? So um, David, I know he's got some top three tips at the end of the show that he's gonna share with us on this, which I'm really excited to find out more about. So, but I think it's, um, it's one of those things that you've got to have passion, you've got to have drive and, and it's got to be, there's got to be some form of, of uh, you can demonstrate what you've done previously. If you're looking for that kind of uh, movement and, and identifying what the challenges are in the role going forward and what is the expectation of the role and I think that's key isn't it Dave is, is when someone is when someone's delivering a role to someone like you said you could put um, you know a blast out there saying you want this this and this you know and it would scare the shit out of people if we're honest 
you know, there'd be a lot of people, technical term, we don't often swear on the show, but it would really put people off. And, and you know, and, and, and you can't blame them because it is a bit, you know, a bit overwhelming. But if we understand what the expectations are or what the role is going to be doing or we have, a, you know, it's results driven, we've got an idea of where that needs to be positioned and, and the type of people that are really going to have that, you know, aptitude approach. Don't you think, Dave? Exactly right. Survival of the fittest, no doubt, as well. And, and it really is. And we're seeing a lot of, you know, great startups in Australia that have, have got, you know, huge amount of innovation that are disrupting, you know, logistics, disrupting mining, disrupting finance, property, you know, banking. There's so many startups coming up that have got a huge amount of backing now. Billions of Australian dollars, in fact, have been invested into the startup market uh, for, you know, from venture capitalists. So, you know, in effect, is sort of, the, you know, getting that funding stream from the venture capitalists. Uh, are enabling these people to really shine because the, the startups seem to be, have that sort of magnetism to draw these innovative people that have those great skills that, that unfortunately seem to slip past the radar of the bigger organisations because they're just not you know, quick enough or, or nimble enough to pick them up and actually put them in a role that's going to fulfil their needs because they haven't got the, the, the speed at which a startup can work. And, and I think that's a real thing at the moment that, that's certainly thriving in Australia. And I know pretty much all over the world that if you've got a startup with the right team of people, the right innovation, the right creativity and the right funding, you know, you're really going to disrupt and, and be able to, you know, take yourself to, to, to market a hell of a lot quick, quicker, don't, don't you think? Yeah, I agree. And I think that the big companies need to back like small companies. I mean, that's kind of the way it goes. I mean, one of the things that uh, I consistently did when I was CTO of these large organizations is I, um, you know, pulled out, you know, 10, 15 of the best people and I put them off in kind of a skunk works organization, even even at a different location than the current company, because I didn't want them to get involved in the culture and, you know, all the limitations of that, things like that, and basically ran them as a startup. And so they had their own place and you know systems to run on they basically had uh, near an unlimited budget to go ahead and get what they needed to make it happen and really kind of you know spike the creativity and innovation in the space and going forward have a management by objective kind of thing you have to come up with a good idea every month we have to go ahead and do a prototype every month in terms of how these things are done but if you don't have those things going forward you really kind of kind of miss the boat and i think that in the past the global 2000 could miss the boat in other words 
there wasn't a compelling reason to have an innovative and creative IT shop within the business, whether it's cloud computing enabled or not. But going forward, if you don't have that, that becomes kind of a key business enabler to kind of take things to the next level. And the concern there would be they're going to die the death of a thousand cuts. And I do think, truly believe that in five years, 10 years down the line, that we're going to see the death of lots of brand names that have been kind of mainstays, you know, in the American market, the European market, things like that, because they don't see these trains coming. And I think they're going to get hit in the tunnel. And then ultimately, it's just going to be, uh, uh, you know, a shame because they could have done things now to kind of change their direction but they're unwilling or, you know, whatever reason to do it. And I think it's, it's just, it's just something that uh, uh, we need to be concerned about is, you know, shareholders and, you know, people who have an innovative space and also, you know, kind of a take on how we're going to basically innovate this market and make it better. Yeah, it really is. And, and like you said, actually, there's a, a, the, the larger organizations that see where their company is going and, and second guess their industry or marketplace, uh, are they're looking at these startups saying, right, well, that business is going to fulfill, fulfill my needs. You know, let's just swallow them up. You know, they're funded. We can just buy them. That's easy. Like you say, keep them away from the culture of the existing company and get them to just, you know, continue doing their great work. But obviously, you know, with the portability of shifting over and being a part of the bigger brand. So, um Dave, what are your top three tips, though? Because I know people are probably thinking, come on, we want the top three tips. What are the top three tips for this week? <laughs> the people are on the edge of their seats. They've finished their popcorn. Their drink's almost flat, and we've still not got through to the top three tips. So over to you, David. <laughs> well, the great thing about our show, they can always grab their little mouse and uh, push it to the right and get to uh, where we need to get to it. Don't say that. Time. Don't say that. We want them to watch the whole bloody thing. We want them to... <laughs> Okay, yes. look, over to you. Over, over to you. So, number one, take some risk in training ahead of the curve, and I think that's it's perfectly natural to kind of think differently, you know, versus waiting for technology to show up. I don't know how many companies kind of waited for cloud computing to become five years old before they invest in any technological shifts and skills gaps training and all these things that occurred in the space. I mean, go, going forward, we have. Uh, not only machine learning, but the ability to leverage a multi-cloud, the ability to, you know, look at some of the deep learning stuff and some of the predictive analytics stuff. You know, even though some of this technology may not bear fruit for your company, it's really a good idea to invest in people that are really kind of uh, become kind of gurus in this technology, able to lead uh, lead people in the space and sit in, um, you know, um, sit in project meetings and so people kind of understand where this technology is able to go. And so it's uncomfortable because if we don't see it in terms of a billion dollar market, we don't want to participate in it. But the reality is it could be a billion dollar market next year. And you want to have the people who are trained in the space were able to take the company in that direction without you having to go back and spend a year latency and hiring the people that you need. Uh, You know, hire those that are innovative. And I can't stress this enough. We have a tendency to kind of hire people that have skill sets. And I think that's fine. But you need to hire people that are really kind of thinking differently out of the market. So these are kind of tough people to find. But creativity, innovation is something that's actually diminishing, I think, in the workforce going forward. And that's what I look for. So people who are questioning things and and actually asking, you know, poking at the uh, disruptors in the space and, you know, trying to see how to do things differently. I mean, that's how we got agile and DevOps and you know, predictive analytics and, you know, some of the stuff that's starting to emerge today is because people had actually stretched, you know, stretched the limits of what people were thinking about. And at the time when these things came up, and I remember when these things came up in conferences and articles and things that were published, they weren't necessarily received very well. And I think that you have to have the courage to go off and disrupt your space. You have to have the courage to, in essence, play in, in different areas that aren't necessarily the accepted culture. And never be afraid to change. That's the big one. So going forward, it's okay to change the way in which we do computing. That's where we're in cloud computing these days. You know, that's where we're in object-based databases versus relational databases. We're moving away from the oracles of the world, the IBMs of the world, into special purpose databases. And by doing that ahead of the curve, you're actually going to bring value into the business because ultimately... The change is going to cause value. It's going to drive value into these organizations. It's going to allow you to, in essence, separate the company in terms of what you can be better than your competition. And that's going to make all the difference. So it's your survival as well as your success. Great top three tips there, David. Thank you so much for that. I hope that's uh, provided people with some great insights and, and provoking some great questions. Thanks for being part of the training show this week. It's awesome as ever. 
It's great to be here, man. <laughs> thanks very much. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you got some, something out of these shows this week. And if you, uh, you're only watching the training show, go back and watch the C-Suites and the Australia show. It's some great content this week that's um, worth having a, having a listen to or, or watching if you can. So look, you, know, you can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Uh, the, the graphics are there. And the links will be in the description box. Uh, we want some interaction. So you know, if you want to tweet David about these shows or tweet myself about the shows, that's great. Any feedback on anything we're doing at the moment or or what you'd like to see coming up in future shows that would be awesome uh, we we obviously you know take hints and tips from people as well on what they we've got some great special guests coming up that i can't actually mention just yet i don't think even david knows uh, who i've got planned at the moment but it's exciting we've got some top people there's a top chap at oracle that wants to come up um, but i'm still waiting for larry to confirm uh, so we'll have to see we'll have to see he was on his jet or something uh, and he said, oh, you know, God, not that Nelson Hilliard guy again. Is it the one with the long hair? And I was like, yeah, it's the one that he went, oh, God, I'll get back to him another time. But anyway, you know, we've got someone from Oracle coming on. I'm not sure if it's going to be Larry or not. But anyway, I digress. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. You can get us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual social media channels. David's there, happy to answer questions, uh, as am I. Uh, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. Until next week, thanks for watching.